warrant, Mr. Gar, for both of you. I prepared a statement for you and for the county attorney. Get the horses, Mingo. I don't like to do this, but we found Lundy. And the Hank Davis boy saw you riding off. Tragedy, but unavoidable. This will explain everything. You don't look like she lived. Valerie's alive? But not for long. How is she, Doctor? Not very well. She's clinging to life by a thread. She's a sinner, and she got what she deserved. This is Lindsay. We will not sit in judgment. We have other things to do. Come in, Reverend. I suppose you want to see her, if I might. People don't share your opinion of her. Well, the townspeople are. The townspeople are wrong. It wasn't wise of you to come back, Reverend. They called me back for the trial. There may not be a trial. What do you mean? A lot of people in this town would like to see John Garth freed. They think the girl got what she deserved. What do you think? Reverend Blake. I don't make moral judgments. I'm doing the best I can for the girl. But since one of Garth's men was killed too, Horvat could have drawn first. But why should Horvat draw on Garth? Because Horvat's a foreigner and Garth's a local hero. Because Horvat has a daughter who tried to cheat Garth out of his money. Failing that, try to cheat him in other ways. You sound like all the rest. Sit down, Reverend. I just wanted you to know what you're up against. And why go through with this pretense of a trial? I'm going through with it because I have some ideals about men like you. Maybe I'm stupid, but I... I don't like to give them up. I'm sorry. I'll help you all I can. Reverend. I hope you don't disappoint me. Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, thank you for giving an old man a moment to get his bearings. It's been more than a few years since I've tried the case. It seems even longer since I left my ranch to get here. <laughs> I was retired, and happily so. I would not have come out of retirement for anyone but John Garth, whom I have known since the day he was born. I watched him grow to sterling manhood. I watched him ride away to war to gain new honors for the Garth name. I saw him return. And then, with growing sadness, I saw him married to the woman, Valerie Horvat. Gentlemen, I've seen much evil in my day, but there is nothing so evil as a debauched, immoral woman. Objection, Your Honor. Let counsel confine himself to defense. Sustained. Very well, I do not have to go on. The facts will convince the jury that John Garth fired his gun in self-defense.
You may proceed to call your witnesses, Counselor. Call Earl Davis. Put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand, please. You do solemnly swear the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Yes. Now, will you tell the court your name, please? Earl Davis. Mm, you go to school here in Lime Rock? Winners. Rest of the time I help my pa go hunting. <laughs> I see. Now, Earl, do you know the defendants? Huh? Oh, yeah. Earl, I want you to think back. Did you see them on the ninth day of this month? While I was hunting. Oh, what were they doing? Riding home from the Horvath place. How do you know it was the Horvath place? Because I heard shooting. When I looked over there, I saw Mr. Garth and Mingo leave. Now, you're sure it was the defendants? Well, yeah, it was them. But I don't blame Mr. Garth one bit. If I was... Thank you, Earl. That's all. Earl, did you see who was doing the firing? No, sir. It was inside the house. Well, did Mr. Garth and Mr. Mingo seem to be running away? Objection, Your Honor. Conjecture. Sustained. Very well. Were the defendants riding rapidly? No, sir. Slow-like. Mr. Garth looked sad. Then they did not seem to be fleeing the spot where they just committed murder. Objection. Sustained. No further questions, Earl. You may step down. Call Reverend Stephen Blake. You are a minister of the gospel, is that correct? I am. You uh, recognize the defendants? I do. And you're acquainted with the wife of the defendant, John Garth? I am acquainted with him. I will have quiet. Continue, Counselor. Thank you, Your Honor. Reverend Blake, when did you first meet John Garth and his wife? Earlier this year. Precisely when? Well, I'm not exactly sure. You'd better be sure, Reverend. Better be almighty sure. It was... It was the 15th of March. I remember. I just conducted my first service in Lime Rock. I was a newcomer. Not only to the region, but to the entire country. Therefore, with some trepidation, I was looking forward to meeting my new parishioners. I couldn't help noticing Mr. and Mrs. Garth. I guess no one else could either. I enjoyed your sermon, Reverend. You appealed to faith and to the heart more than to fear. I try to, Mrs. Garth. I hope to hear more of what you have to say soon. Hope? I'm sure you will. I enjoyed meeting you, Reverend. Thank you. My name's Jim Mingo, Reverend, to work out at the Garth place. Nice meeting you. Anything I can do for you? <laughs> no thanks. I just come to give you this. Please 
come to see me. I know you are my friend, and I need your help very much. Valerie Goss. Who gave you this? Mrs. Goss. Does Mr. Goss know about it? Guess so. He was standing right there when she gave it to me. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm looking for Mr. Garth. My name's Garth. But you probably want my brother. In the house, down that way. Thanks. Get up. You came. My wife has not been well lately. You mean physically? I wish it were that simple. Illnesses of the body are so much easier to cure. She seemed very alert and animated at church. She seemed to respond to you, Reverend. Otherwise, she takes no interest in anything. Something deep inside seems to be disturbing her. Well, suppose we talk to her. She's asleep. No, that's all right. I'll get her. Excuse me. forward to it, ever since I got your note. That note was an error. I don't know why I wrote it. Of course you do, my dear. You thought the Reverend could help you. But I don't need any help. I'm perfectly happy. Darling, darling, the Reverend is a very busy man. He was nice enough to come here. The least you can do is talk to him. It is because he's a busy man. I do not wish to take up his time. Perhaps if I come back again. It isn't necessary. But I say it is. Please do come again, Reverend. I think it is most important. I will. Goodbye, Reverend. Goodbye to both of you. Excuse me, Reverend. My name is Louis Horvath. Yes, I know. How do you do, sir? My wife, Lily. Ma'am. We understand you visited our daughter, Valerie. I saw her quite recently. Please, how is she? Well, haven't you been seeing her lately? No, my... My husband has been sick and... It's such a long ride. Valerie thinks very highly of you, Reverend. Could you watch out for her? She told me she didn't need my assistance. But she does, Reverend. She does. Please. Visit her again. You are the only one who can help her. As a man of God, I, I beg you. Well, 
Well, hello, preacher. You back again, huh? <laughs> Where are you going? Well, from now on, I sleep out in the bunkhouse. You come to see the missus? Yes. How is she? Who knows? Does uh, my brother know you're here? Your brother invited me. Oh, he did? Well, then, you just go right on in, Reverend. Are you finally talking to the Reverend, dear? Eh? Calm yourself. I'm sorry, sir. I'll have to ask you to leave. Isn't there something I can do? No, no. I'm quite capable of taking care of my wife myself. Good day, Reverend. In the name of God, take me away tonight or it will be too late. I beg of you, Valerie. Mary Chase, Reverend. I looked for you. Your wife needs a doctor. Not just yet. It's plain you're running away with her, so what I'm going to do is perfectly justified. This is the biggest mistake of your life, Reverend. Did you take Mrs. Garth, Reverend? Into town. Directly to Dr. Jackson's place. Why? What was wrong with her? Must I? Must I answer that question? Yes, Reverend, you must. Mrs. Garth was going to have a baby. Yeah. Unfortunately, the building was locked. There was a note saying that Dr. Jackson had been called a great crossing and wouldn't be back until the following day. Under the circumstances, I, I thought it best to take Mrs. Garth to her parents' home. I see. Then what did you do after that? I rode to the sheriff's office. 
A deputy, Jim Moran, was on duty. I reported that John Garth had threatened to kill his wife and myself. Did the uh, deputy say he'd do anything? He said he'd take care of the matter. And I went home to change my clothes. It was on the way back that I heard of the murder. Object to the use of the word murder. Sustained. Witnesses' remarks will be stricken. Reverend Blake, what did you do after that? I saw Sheriff Barrett, and I went to Benton City to report to my superior. Then it did occur to you that by carrying a woman away from her husband's home, you might be jeopardizing your position in this community. She was unconscious and needed help. There was no one in the house. At the time, I was sure it was the best thing to do. And I'm still sure. Thank you, Reverend. Your witness, Counselor. Reverend, do you know the penalty for perjury? I do. Yet you persist in telling the jury that John Garth was present on all the numerous occasions you visited his wife. Yes, Mr. Garth was always present. Doesn't it strike you as peculiar that on the one night, the night you took her away, the night you allegedly needed his help, he wasn't there? Yes, it did seem strange at the time. Almost as though it had been planned that way. You still have those letters you mentioned in your testimony? Yes, I do. May I have them? In the name of God, take me away tonight, or it will be too late. Signed, Valerie. Doesn't it sound as though the planning, if any, was on the part of Mrs. Garth? That she knew her husband wouldn't be there, and that this was your one chance to run away together? I don't know what it sounds like. I went because I thought she needed help. Your Honor, I request that these letters be entered in the record. No objection. Let them be entered. Reverend, you testified that when John Garth caught up with you, you forced him to leave at the point of a gun. That's correct. Do you always carry a shotgun in the performance of your ministerial duties? I keep a shotgun in my buggy. I do a bit of hunting. Quail. What was that? <laughs> Under examination, Reverend, you stated you thought Valerie Garth a beautiful woman. She is. Of course. And on that night, that long night, weren't your arms around this beautiful woman when her husband found you? She was unconscious and I was trying to revive her. Well, that's one way of putting it, Reverend. Perhaps the lady had swooned from the ardors of your attentions. Everything I said in this room... Everything I've said in this room is the truth. No further questions. You're excused, Reverend. Listen, John, you're on trial for your life. I may have to ask some very embarrassing questions this afternoon, and I want straight answers. None of this noble stuff. You understand? I understand. Good. Now, what about your brother, Herb? What about him? Can he be of help to us? No. No, Herb doesn't want any part of this. I hear he's pulling out of town. Your full name? John Huntington Garth. Occupation? Cattle rancher. Any war record? I served with the Union Army for five years. What rank? Major. Did you enter service with that rank? No, I volunteered as a private soldier. And received numerous citations for bravery. Not numerous. Three to be exact. At the end of your service, did you return immediately to Lime Rock? I traveled a while first. What brought you home? Word of my father's illness. He'd been a strong man and the best of health when I left for the Army. Word of his illness was both sudden and unexpected. I arrived too late. My father had already passed away. He was a fine man. His passing affected me deeply. 
My brother Herb helped me bridge my sorrow. It was good getting back to work and to the people I knew and loved. Though in my absence, the town had grown and prospered with many new settlers from everywhere. But for every change, for every new face, there was something or someone I remembered from childhood. Settlers. The name's Horvath. Foreigners. She's beautiful, isn't she? Why, Mr. Gard. Madam Horvath, delighted to meet you. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. And the river it runs into. I can't get over the size of America. It's so vast. It must have made many men rich. Yeah, well, those who had the strength to tame it. You had the strength? No, my father did. Perhaps he had a little too much. It made him difficult to live with sometimes. But he made himself and you rich. Thank you so much. stock there is. But where are the others? I sold them. Then you must have received a lot of money. Yes, I did. Good. Having money is so much more appealing than having cows. Cattle, darling. Cattle. <laughs> Only I, uh, I'm afraid I don't have them. Val, you remember those buildings in town? The school, the library? Yes. Well, my father was a very generous man. He, he was forever pledging funds for things the town needed. Now I'm having to pay back all the money he borrowed to meet those pledges. Then we're quite poor. Poor? We have more land than you can ride across in a day. Do 
you, Valerie. My bride. Darling, how long does it take to rebuild a herd of cattle? Well, I don't know. A couple of years, maybe. Why do you ask? Why didn't you tell me that before our marriage? What difference does it make? You'll always have a roof over your head, the best food in the state. And me. Isn't that enough? I'm tired. I think I go to my room. Valerie? Can you hear me? I'll take care of it the first thing in the morning. Herb, you get those final bills and papers all cleared away? Yeah, all clear. How was it down at Miskey Bottom? Hot? Sure, it was hot all right. Yeah, I bet it was. Oh, uh, did you get everything that I wanted? Yes. Think about your brother? No, not always. Do you ever think about me? Well, am I so difficult to look at that you can ignore me just like that? No, you, you ain't so difficult to look at. Well, if uh, you'll excuse me, I'll go find John. John is not at the house. Why do you dislike me, sir? I never said I disliked you. Good. Because I want us to be friends. Mm. What's the matter? Thinking of your brother again? Yeah. Thinking what a bright idea he had marrying you. <laughs> you despise me, don't you? Yeah. I guess I do. But you would give anything to kiss me? Or would you have to ask your brother? Too. 
hug. You're not leaving. I guess I am. But why? You better ask my brother. Like all explorers who journey into new regions, my dear friends, I'm looking forward very much to meeting my new parishioners. Don't you think the new pastor is an interesting looking man? Be careful with him, Audley. Sure. Him and me have been friends for a long time. Good morning, Mr. Guy. I'd like to speak to you for a moment. Surely. I just had a talk with your wife. I wish I'd been there. Mr. Garth, I'm going to speak to you frankly. Go ahead. Your wife's a very unhappy woman. She's nervous, irritable, easily excited. I know that. Do you have any idea why? I prefer not to talk about that. Why not? Well, let's just say that's a husband's right. I don't wish to pry, but maybe I could be of some service to both you and Mrs. Garth. Oh? How? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but with your permission, I'd like to try. You're a man of God, Reverend. If you think you can help, it'd be wrong for me to stand in your way. So you can feel free to call any time you wish. Thank you, Mr. Garth. I'll come back tomorrow. Any time at all. Yep. And of all the places my uncle visited, Vienna was always his favorite. Good evening. Hello, darling. Mr. Garth. Go on. My father once asked him why, and my uncle, who had quite an eye for these things, replied, the two most precious things in the world Peace? No, thank you. And beauty. And Vienna provides both in ample measure. Peace when you've had enough of its mellowing wine, and beauty in the form of its enchanting women, of whom one can never have enough. <laughs> you tell the most charming stories, Reverend. <laughs> yes. And he never runs out of them, either. I, uh, I had no idea it was quite so late. I hope I didn't exhaust you, Mrs. Garth. On the contrary. You exhilarated me. I'll walk you to the door. Please don't go for a while. I'm sorry, but I've had a hard day. I, I think I'll turn in. Good night, darling. Good night. Reverend. Please sit here. to knock. Please get out. Goodbye, Mrs. Garth. I've been looking forward to seeing you again. That was a fine exhibition. Well, 
must you shame me in my own house? Mr. Cross? You all right? What happened to you, Mr. Goss? Been something I ate for supper. I just reached here to check the stock. I, I collapsed. Where's Mrs. Gar? She ain't here. Where is she? She left. Where? Where'd she go? With the preacher. I tried to find you, Mr. Gar. I'm going to take you home with me, Valerie. She's not going with you. You can't get away with this, Reverend. Start writing. I suppose I should have tried to stop them, but in spite of everything, I didn't want Valerie to get hurt. We understand, John. To what do you attribute your collapse the night your wife ran away? Well, it seems obvious. The food I ate at supper had been tampered with. Your witness. You haven't quite finished your story, Mr. Garth. Tell us, what happened the next day? I went to get my wife. Precisely, at her parents' home. Precisely. With the idea of killing all three of them. That is not true. I love my wife. All I wanted to do was bring her home. Well, what prevented you? Her father. He started shooting as soon as Lundy and I entered the house. We had to fire in self-defense. Mr. Garth, he... Presumed to outshoot two armed men? He had his gun ready. Ours were still in their holsters. Oh, oh, I see. Mr. Garth, on the day that you went to the Horvat Ranch to get your wife, did you know that she was going to have a child? No. Didn't she tell you? Now, had she told me, I would have known, wouldn't I? <laughs> Mr. Garth, is there any reason why your wife should have kept such an important fact from you? Yes. I couldn't have been the father. Your Honor, I move this heinous charge of murder be dismissed. On the grounds that John Garth did what any man in this room would be proud to do. Oh. 
Yeah, well, clear the court. Counselor, I have been advised that Mrs. Garth is able to testify. Therefore, I deny the motion for dismissal. Your Honor, will Mrs. Garth testify for the defense or for the prosecution? I don't know. But since this is a trial for murder with men's lives at stake, the court will call Mrs. Garth. Where is Mrs. Garth? Her condition will not permit her to enter the courtroom. Therefore, court will adjourn to Dr. Jackson's clinic after an hour's recess. Do not discuss this case with anyone, and permit no one to discuss it with you. The court is now recessed. Garth, you realize the court desires to hear whatever you may have to say that will throw light on this case. However, it does not wish to jeopardize your health or your life. I'm well enough for this. Raise your right hand, please. You do solemnly swear the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Tell the truth. All of it. I do. I swear to tell the truth. We know what a strain this is on you, Mrs. Garth. We will eliminate cross-examination. Just tell your story as best you can. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess it all began when we first arrived in America. Refugees from a foreign land, seeking a new home, a land of opportunity where all of us could make a fresh start. The church was the only link with the world we had left behind. It helped to ease the homesickness that we felt at first. Then I was aware that two men were watching me. There was a family resemblance between them, and I found out later that they were brothers. I liked the way one of them looked, his kind face. Then one day there was a visitor to our house, a man I heard my father say did him honor by calling at our home. My parents were much impressed, for they thought him a man of position and wealth. But he was the brother of the man whose face I had liked. But I wanted to please my parents, and so I consented to his calling on me. Mr. Goss lost no time in proving to me the extent of his wealth. Here. You see all that land?
Did you have a pleasant ride, my darling? Well... He said he spoke to you about marrying me. Is that true? Yes, we... We have reached an agreement. Why didn't you tell me? But we wanted him to tell you. But I'm not in love with him. Why must I marry? Marie, darling, you must trust your mother and myself. Mr. Gars comes from a very respected family. Love will come to you in time. If our families are united in marriage, it will establish us here. And you need not feel inferior, my darling. We have agreed, according to custom, to give Mr. Gars a substantial amount of money as your dowry. Yes. Quite substantial. But we feel it is an investment in your future happiness. But I don't know him. He frightens me. It's so strange. My darling, it is sudden, I know. But there is time. It will be all right. Sit down, my bride. What were you doing in there? I was unpacking. Your trousseau? Yes. And you have a nice trousseau? Lots of soft, silky things like that thing you're wearing? Yes. You seem frightened. I don't mean to be. You weren't frightened when you kissed my brother. That was nothing. Just a matter of custom. Just a matter of custom. <laughs> custom. Custom is a very important thing to you foreigners, isn't it? Do you know how much I got for marrying you? My dowry? $15,000. $15,000. $15,000 for making you a guard. Do you think it is worth it? Please. Please don't. It's romantic, isn't it? Just the way you've always dreamt of romance and marriage. I'll do my best to be a good wife. Fine, because you can begin now. <laughs> Take it. Take it. go along soon enough then. I hardly even know your brother. Oh. Well, 
I know him. I know him real well. I know what he wants, too. The land, the cattle, the ranch, and you. Speak of your brother like that. Don't you ever talk to me about brothers. I've had four years of brother fighting against brother. Spying and, and informing on brother. You see... You see, that was my job during the war. To break brothers down. To torment them. To whip them, to torture them until I got them to implicate and condemn their own brothers. That was my job. Four long, sickening years of it. So don't you ever try to trick me. Don't you ever try to trick me. With my brother, or with anyone else. Let me go! Let me go! Please, not like this. Please. Where is he? He'll be here in a second. Valerie, give him a chance. What do you mean? Well, he went through a lot in the war. I was the lucky one. I was too young, so I stayed home. But he had to do the fighting and the killing. I know. He told me all that. Well, all he needs is a, is a chance. A, a little time to work things out. He'll be all right again. Will he have... Will he... Try, Valerie. Try. He is my husband. I'd be good with you been doing, Herb? Oh, getting those final bills and papers cleared away. How was it down at Mesquite Bottom? Hot, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was hot, all right. You invite Herb for dinner? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, invite him. Don't you foreigners have any manners? Don't you think you've had enough? You're always trying to take something away from me, aren't you, Herb? It's funny how long you've been jealous of me. The younger brother. Cheated out of everything. The good times. The ranch. The money. So now you try to get even by going after my wife. That isn't true, isn't it? You think I'm blind? You think I don't know what's been bothering you ever since I told you I was going to marry Valerie? I'm sorry. I was hoping things might be just a little different. If I ever catch you two together, I'll kill you both. Hello, what are you doing out here? I'm looking for John. He's been gone all day. Probably in town getting drunk. What do you use on you last night? Prisoner interrogation method number three? I'd rather not talk about it. I guess I was wrong about him. He isn't any good. He's my husband. 
Valerie, I'm pulling out. I want you to go with me. Dad, I can't. But you can't stay here. I've been watching him these last few months. He's getting worse. He's like an animal. Look what he's done to you. He's broken you the way he used to break the prisoners in the war. Stop, Bob, stop. But don't you understand about him? Don't you know that Pa went broke trying to pay for his gambling and drinking while he was running around the countryside? Valerie, don't you know why he married you? I know it all. Well, then come with me for your own good. I can't. Please don't ask me why. Yeah, I think that way it'll be better for all of us. It's nice to have met you, Reverend. Well, a new Reverend certainly has a way with words, doesn't he? He's an educated man. Maybe he's a little too educated. Folks around here won't trust him. Hey, come on. Val, I sometimes forget how pretty you are. The way Blake looked at you again today, I have the most beautiful wife in town. I don't think the Reverend is interested in my appearance. No, that's where you're wrong. It's tormenting me, your only amusement. I'm just a jealous husband, that's all. John, I would like to leave the ranch and return to live with my parents. It is not for my own sake. I'm going to have a child. When did you find that out? I have known it for some time. I'm no longer able to endure the life you've made for me at the ranch. I don't want a child. I don't want to have to support your brat. Well, there is nothing either one of us can do about it now. Isn't there?
wake up. Val, open the door. Open up. Open up. Valerie, why are you so frightened of me? You tried to kill me this morning. I have no intention of killing you now. Val. Val, you want to be free of me. Sit down, please. Val, I want you to understand something. Because if you do, I may be willing to help. Help you. And yourself. And our baby. You see, if I were to let you go so you could divorce me, why, you'd have every right in the world to sue me for the return of the dowry. Maybe more. And even though I'm a Garth, and you're a foreigner, well, you might win your case. Just let me go. Please. I won't ask for anything. A woman with a baby can become very grasping. Especially with a mother like yours whispering in her ear. In my word? That's not good enough. I think it would be better if, if you wrote a little note to someone new in these parts. A handsome, educated man. Someone that people don't know and therefore probably resent a little bit. The new minister. That's right. You see, I am going to divorce you. And to make that possible, you're going to have a lover. No one would believe it. Oh, people are always willing to believe the worst. Now, will you write the note? I can't. Write it. Oh. No, please! Write it! I can't! I can't! You write this note! Stay there till I call you. I beg of you. Do as I tell you. Think about your baby. places my uncle visited. Vienna was always his favorite. He'd stand for hours outside St. Stephen's Cathedral, admiring its peace and beauty. Mr. Garth! Mr. Garth! Yeah, what is it? Your wife isn't feeling well. Maybe you'd better come in. Say goodbye. I have to get back to town. Goodbye, Reverend.
Mr. Garth, perhaps you better call the doctor. Check your wife's condition. Thank you, Reverend. I can take care of her myself. I would have told the truth. Oh? I think it's time you wrote him another note. An important note. No, please. During the war, Valerie, as I've told you, my job was gaining information from prisoners. reputation for always getting what I wanted. received your message by now. Here. Here, drink this. It'll make you feel better. Drink it. to conceal her shame. I pity her, yet I submit we cannot believe her. As proof, let me call your attention to the letters. That she was forced into writing them against her wishes is inconceivable. Your Honor, are of a comparatively recent origin. Mrs. Garth, how did you receive those birds? The second letter to Reverend Blake. 
The one asking you to take me away. I didn't want to write it. My husband. These burns, Your Honor, could not have been self-inflicted. <laughs> Don't make me kill her. I will not for... Everybody out of here except Blake. Mr. Guard, you're destroying whatever sympathy the... I don't want your sympathy. Now everybody clear out. You, Reverend, lead the way. She can't be moved. She'll die if you don't do as I say. Clear the way, preacher. Hurry up with the horses. Step aside, Reverend. No. For her sake, let him go. I know what I'm doing. that away, Herb. No. This is one time you're not gonna have your way, brother. 